What's up everyone, it's Prabdeep with Ace Pants and today we're going to talk about cat skin of abdomen and pelvis and how the contrast versus non-contrast studies can be used to help us diagnose GI and general surgery pathologies. So we'll start off with cat skin of abdomen and pelvis without contrast. So the first benefit of non-contrast study is to be able to look at calcifications, okay? Second, it allows to look at fat stranding. Now, I'm sure you guys know this already if you have done G, uh, GI or GU. Um, CT abdomen pelvis without contrast is the initial study of choice for kidney stones or uterus stones. I mean, you can do ultrasound, but if you really definitively want to be able to diagnose, CAT scan without contrast is the best way to do it. You can use contrast, and we'll talk about that uh, later in the video when we're talking about IV contrast, to help you further evaluate how obstructive the stone is. But we'll talk about that at the end of the video. But the initial test uh, when it comes to CAT scan should be done without contrast. And it makes sense because the stones light up the same way as contrast does. So if you're giving PO contrast or IV contrast, then it's going to limit your ability to be able to uh, see the stones in the kidney or the collective system. And secondly, fast stranding is seen with inflammatory processes. Okay, this can be secondary to appendicitis diverticulitis, or ischemic bell. Anything that causes inflammation will cause the fat around it and the mesentery or the omentum to situate on the CAT scan. Let me draw this out to give you a better picture as to what, what happens in terms of fast trending. So let's say this is the bell. Around the bell, we have fatty tissue, right? And the omentum or the mesentery. So let's say there is an inflammatory process of the bell. Might be infectious, might be ischemic, autoimmune, anything that can cause inflammation will cause the bowel to thicken up, right? Because remember, part of inflammatory process is swelling. So what's going to happen is this is going to affect the fatty tissue around the bowel. It's going to cause it to swell up. So it's going to become edematous, okay? And not only that, there are lymphatic systems that are draining these, these bowels. So if there's an immunological response going on in the bowel, the lymphatic system is going to get activated and they're going to appear engorged on the CAT scan. Okay, and that engorgement of the lymphatics, the, edem uh, the, the fatty tissue becoming edematous is going to appear as fat stranding on the CAT scan. All right, so let's move on to CAT scan of the abdomen pelvis with PO contrast. So let's look at this image right here. So we got the esophagus. From the esophagus, we're going to the stomach. Then the green here is a small bowel. And then we have the large bowel to end off the uh, enteric system. So if you give PO contrast, right? It's going to go through the esophagus, into the stomach, and it's going to travel through the whole entire system, right? Depending on how long you wait. Normally, after the patient has drank the contrast, you wait about an hour. And after that, you can perform the imaging because it's gone down enough through the GI tract for you to be for it to be helpful for you, okay? But the issue with the PO contrast is that most of the patients who are coming with abdominal pain are also having nausea and vomiting, okay? They're not in the mood of drinking this disgusting contrast, even though the nurses try their best to make it, you know, feasible for them to drink, but it's still not pleasant. So you can try antiemetics, uh, take away the nausea and the vomiting, or if it's really bad and you really need the contrast, what you can do is you can place an NG tube and give the contrast through that NG tube. And for this one, you don't have to wait as long uh, as you would if the patient was just drinking it, okay? Now, the real question is, why do we need PO contrast? So let's say a patient has an obstruction here, right? Let's draw this out here again. So let's say the obstruction is right here. Now, what's going to happen is the contrast is going to come in and it's going to stop at the transition point where the obstruction is. This is going to help us to see where the transition point is. Now, don't get me wrong. You can see the transition point uh, in a study without PO contrast, but it's more helpful if you do give PO contrast, okay? Not only that, uh, once the patient has been diagnosed with an obstruction, whether it's large bell or small bell, uh, you can do serial abdominal x-rays when they're in the hospital to see if this contrast makes it past this obstruction. Let's say a patient was diagnosed with a small bowel obstruction. On day two of hospital, uh, you see the patient's pain has improved. So what you do is you can get an abdominal x-ray and see if this contrast has made it in the large bowel. If it has, that means the obstruction has resolved. 
even though like you know for example older patients uh their gi motility is slower and they're you know have they often have chronic constipation they might not open up like how normal patients would meaning they would have having bowel function so this is a very helpful thing to do where you can do abdominal x-ray and if you do see that on the x-ray they have opened up then you can give them medications for, uh, to help them move their bowels okay but you don't want to do that if the patient's actively obstructed. Now it's not a big deal. Not a lot of a lot of the surgeons don't practice this way, but it is useful. You know, there are times if the patient did get PO contrast in the ED, then we can do serial down exams uh, later on to see if the contrast has progressed or not. And another benefit of PO contrast is, is that it dilates the bell. Okay, so normally, let's say. This is how the bowel is without contrast. With contrast, it's going to be dilated, okay? And plus, there's going to be contrast in between it. So what this is going to help us measure the thickness of the wall. Normally, the bowel wall is about 3 millimeters. So if there's contrast in between the two, uh, between the walls, um, you can easily measure the thickness of the bowel wall and see if it's three millimeters or not. Okay. And remember thickness, if the bowel wall is thickened, that means there's some sort of inflammatory process going on. Uh, and this can be infectious, uh, autoimmune, uh, or ischemic in nature. So these are the two main, uh, use cases, uh, of PO contrast. All right. So now let's move on to CAT scan of the pelvis with IV contrast. Now, this is kind of interesting, but before I start, uh, let's look at how the contrast is given and how it's going to travel through the body. All right, let's suppose this is the arm of the patient. We usually like 18 gauge IV and the contrast is going to be given through here, right? So how is this contrast going to travel now? So it's going to go through here into the veins and then that vein is going to, is going to drain into the superior vena cava and the superior vena cava is gonna drain into the right atrium. Then you guys know the whole thing, left uh, right uh, ventricle, left atrium, left uh, ventricle. And from there, from there, it's gonna go into the systemic circulation. So let's look at the circulatory system and that will help us understand these different phases of uh, IV contrast. So we have the arteries to start off, which drain into arterioles. Then it goes to the capillaries and venules and then the veins. I'm going to make the capillaries orange just so it's easier to. Okay. So the contrast is first going to hit the arteries, right? That's the early arterial phase. So the early arterial phase is going to help us evaluate the patency of the arteries. If there's any blockage thrombus or anything is going to be detected in this phase. And after that, the contrast will get into the uh, arterioles and be pushed out into the capillaries. And what is the function of the capillaries? It's for the, the nutrients to be exchanged from the arteries into the organs, okay? So it allows organ perfusion. So delayed arterial phase, which is the, also known as the capillary phase, is going to let us know if the organs are lighting up. If the organs are lighting up, that means they are getting perfused. So this is for perfusion of the organs. So let's say there's ischemic bowel, that part of the bowel, which is not getting perfused, is not gonna light up. Now the portal phase is when the contrast has now made it into the veins. Okay, and it's in the portal venous system, then the IVC, and then it goes back to the heart. Okay, so this is going to help us determine if there's a clot or something blocking the veins. Uh, if there's a mass effect, maybe a patient has cancer or tumor uh, load that's um, compressing against the vein. And that will, you know, we'll see that in the venous phase or the portal phase. Now, number four is the nephrogenic phase. Now, remember, uh, we talked about it here that the perfusion of the organs happened in the delayed arterial phase. That's where we're gonna be able to see if the organs are being perfused or not. However, for the kidneys, it takes a lot of time for this blood to completely uh, perfuse the parenchyma. And that's why we have to wait a little longer and we call that the nephrogenic phase, okay? It's during this phase is when the kidneys are fully, the kidney, uh, the renal parenchyma is fully perfused and if it is, then the contrast is gonna then the contrast is gonna light it up. And guys, this is all happening within seconds. If we actually had to do numbers here, early arterial phase 
happens within 15 seconds when the contrast is given. Delayed arterial phase, 30 seconds. Portal phase, about 70 seconds. Anything after 80, after 80, is nephrogenic phase. The delayed phase, which we'll talk about now, happens after about, I would say, three to five minutes. So what the delayed phase is, is when the contrast has gone through the circulation and it has now made it to the kidneys and is getting ready to be excreted. It's also known as the washout phase. So basically, in this phase, the contrast is now being thrown out of the body. Okay, so during the delayed phase, you're going to see the contrast going into the kidneys and then the uterine then into the bladder, depending on how long you wait. And remember guys, early in the video, I told you guys that uh, in order to diagnose kidney stones or ureteral stones, we should not give IV contrast, right? But there's an exception. This is that exception. During this delayed phase, we can see how badly obstructing that stone is. Let's say a patient has a distal ureteral stone, right? If the contrast does not make it past that stone, that means it's causing an obstruction and will eventually lead to hydronephrosis if it hasn't already and the patient's gonna need stenting. So basically guys, the whole point of the delayed phase is to see how well the urinary collective system is working, okay? I hope all of this makes sense to you guys and you guys learned something new today. I know this was a topic that I greatly struggled with when I was a student. Uh, I didn't learn about the different phases and how to use PO versus IV contrast until I had started working. Uh, unfortunately, they're the textbooks that I was using or, you know, the other handbooks that I was using, none of them really went over the different phases and how to effectively use the contrast so yeah i hope this was helpful for you guys and if you learned something new today then please do me a favor like this video share it with your friends and colleagues i would greatly appreciate it and it helped me grow my channel and my uh, page but that's it for this video i hope you guys enjoyed it uh, i'm going to try to make another video or maybe i'll just make another post regarding how each one of these studies can be used to diagnose different general surgery pathologies and gi pathologies i still haven't figured out how i'm going to go about that but once i do then i'll post something about it either uh, sometime next week or maybe over the weekend that's it guys stay safe stay tuned and i'll be back tomorrow again with more content thank you guys